Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to play Castell, the game of people stacking. <laughs> and it's not a dexterity game, it's actually a very thinky, puzzly, Euro-style game of thinkingness and puzzleishness, And it's pretty neat, I kind of like it, so we're going to be playing it, because I want to. Um, so let's take a look at the board, and don't be overwhelmed, um, but here's the play area. Um, in this game, the point is you're trying to make the most number of points. Shocker, I know. Uh, points are um, stars, so anytime you see stars in this game, and you'll see them as we zoom in closer, uh, but stars are points, and basically at the end of 10 rounds, so here's our round marker, I'll put it down this way, we're going to be playing in 10 rounds, and at the end of 10 rounds, we're going to calculate our points. Those points are going to come from two things. You're going to see here, these things, and it's going to be confusing for a minute, of course, um, these are festival trackers. So these are different places where festivals are going to be taking place. And as we perform at these festivals, we're going to be marking our best score from those festivals. So our star is going to be tracking our best festival score. If I perform and get 14 points here and then 12 points there, I don't actually move my marker up because I'm just going to keep track of my best score. So at the end of the game, your score is going to come from your best festival score, tracked up there. Plus, you're going to get um, some points based off of having visited these different places and performing and earning different things there. So, um, the more places that here, I'll show you on this board. The more places that we can earn, we're going to track all of our rewards that we earn on these this little mini version of the map. And the more places that we can actually earn things in, get our name out there, we're going to earn more points. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. So we're going to get points from our best festival score, from performing at the different locations. There's going to be another place to get points. We'll get points for being able to complete these different towers and things. Um, you can see here, there are point values on there. Um, and you're going to get points for diversifying the kinds of number tokens that you're going to be collecting throughout the game. So that's kind of like diversifying who's in your towers, essentially, more or less. Um, so yeah, so trying to get good on your festival, collect these different number tokens, try to collect these big square tokens, and filling up your map, that's going to be how you collect points. Now before we actually talk about a turn, what we need to do is talk about how to build a human tower. That's definitely the heart of this game, and it's kind of a com complicated thing to learn, but once we have figured out how to build the best tower, then we can start talking about where we want to go perform and stuff like that. So because of the way that things were drawn, and speaking of the way things were drawn, when I was doing the setup video, the um, variety up here was kind of lacking. There were two or three locations not even represented in those festivals, and everything else was doubled, which is fine. Normally, I would have just stuck with that. But for this video, I was feeling a little self-conscious, so I randomly selected um, two of these tiles to swap out for tiles that were not represented. So if you did watch my setup video, I just want to point out that there are two tiles that are different from the setup video. That was just me feeling weird and guilty. But for now, let's go look at the red play area so we could talk about the rules that come from building the human towers. Okay, here we have the red player area. And as always, if you've seen my videos, you know that I will usually add a red paper or a blue paper, depending on the player, um, to just emphasize that player color. Especially in this case, where the only way that you'd be able to tell as I go from one shot to the next is these red tokens here and this red banner. It just felt kind of too subtle for me as I was kind of looking at it on camera. So I have since added a red paper to make sure that that's clear. Okay, so the red player has started off with these seven castellers. Every player does start with seven. I want to use their castellers to discuss the rules for human tower building. The first rule, there's three of them, so these three rules are going to stand unless you strengthen yourself. We'll talk about that in a second. So the three main rules for building a castell is, the rule number one, you're going to have different le levels, right? Every level has to have the same castellers together. So for example, Right now, I would not be able to have 9s and 10s on the bottom level. So, my bottom level would have to have all 9s, and your second level would have to have all 7s, and whatever. So the first rule is, you can't mix people within a level. The second rule is, none of your levels can be wider than 3. 3 is your maximum width for your level. So that's kind of why I came over to the red player, because they had 3 9s. So right now, they are following the rules. We've got 3 9s on the bottom level, which is cool. 
The other rule that we've got to follow here, I just, wanted to, just don't want you to get confused. That guy's up there. The other rule that we have to follow is for subsequent levels, the levels going up, the numbers on the Castellers have to be smaller than those underneath them, and you have to have a smaller number of Castellers. So looking at what this guy has right now, we have three nines, a 10, six, five, and a seven. So the best that we could do is to put three nines at the bottom level and then put a seven underneath. We haven't mixed any numbers of, of people within a level. We have three as our maximum width and the level above it has a lower number printed on the tile as well as a smaller number of people above it. They could even, let's say that in a couple of rounds, uh, this player gets another seven. We could put another seven here, but if they got another seven, at this point, they would not be able to add another seven here because they need a smaller number of tiles for each subsequent level. But if we did get this second seven, we could put it there. And at that point, we would be able to bring a six on top or even a five on top. But you couldn't put a 10 on top because that number is higher than the sevens below it. So these guys are not strong enough to hold up that, that big fella there. Okay, so if if they manage to get a second seven, this is kind of the best tower that they would be able to create. Now, that's not terribly exciting because you're trying to build these big and exciting towers. I don't know why I said exciting twice, but here, let me grab this from the board. For example, maybe the red player is gunning for this tower here. Well, this is absolutely the best tower you could do to start off the game because we're following those three rules, which is why we're gonna be going to the different regions on the board and training in these different areas. So let's talk about what these different training things do, and I'm gonna kinda keep this here as a possible reference to pull from. If by chance you train this thing here, we have our nice skill reference here, it's called the mix. If you train in the mix, so we're gonna put a mix down here at level one. We have the ability to mix, at a level one ability. What that means is that on one of your levels, you can mix players of the same height. Now, if you take a look here, the nine and the seven, oh sorry, the 10 and the nine are the exact same height of players. But the 10 is just a little bit taller than the seven. And the way that works is threes and fours, so threes and fours, those are the same height. Fives and sixes are the same height. Sevens and eights are the same heights and nines and tens are the same height. So if I can get my mix at a level one, one of my levels could have a mixture of the same height Castellers. Okay, this would be illegal though because I can't have four on my Castell yet. So I could have a mix like that. And if you move this up to a two, that means that your second level could have a mix. So instead of the seven, I could have an eight, for example because I could have two levels that have mixtures of numbers. All right, so that's what the mixture thing is gonna do. I gotta do my best to remember what I've pulled out for the game. I think this was here, this was here. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll review the tape, don't worry. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, and then a 10, okay. All right, next. This is going to increase the width of all of your levels. So remember, one of the rules was that all of your levels have a maximum width of three. But if we put this here at two, that means that we could have a maximum width of five. And so I would be able to pull in a nine and another nine. Okay, that would be legal for my tower because my width could be up to a five. And if by chance I had this mix here, then this 10 over here could be replaced with uh, that, or that nine could be replaced with the 10. So you can hopefully see how these mixtures are gonna be able to make it easier for you to build cooler um, castells. All right, let's pull these off. So this one is gonna let you move your width beyond a level three or a three width. Um, this one here is called balance. What that means is that you would be able to have towers or levels of the same width on top of each other. So if this was a level one, Looking at our example before, this was kind of our base cool example. What this would mean is if I had this here and I had another seven, I would be able to have one level that's the same length as the level below it. If this was a two, that would mean, oh, I'm kind of grabbing, uh, what have I got available? Ooh, over here, I just pulled out a pile of things. Okay, so if it looked like that, that would mean I could have my normal level of 10 down here, and then I could have two additional levels of the same heights above it. 
So that would be an example, okay? Or let's look, how was it before? Maybe it looked like this, and with a level two, we could put two sixes above it, and then a five, and then a four. Oh, I don't have a four. Oh, a three, how about that, a three? Because we are breaking the rule one time and two times with this having the same number. So that's what that balance is right there. Yeah, balance. Okay. So that's one thing you could do there. Strength. Let's start with the strength of one. A strength of one means that you could increase the numbers printed above it, the legal amount, by one. So what that would mean is if I had that strength, then I could put some other level nines because legally I should only be able to put eights or fewer on this level here. But if I have more strength, oh, I've got to pull all these off. I'm going to try to remember. All right. If I have this strength, that means that one level can increase um, their number by one of what they can hold up. So these guys can normally only hold up eights or smaller, but right now they're going to be able to hold up nines. If by chance I had that at a two, that would mean that these guys could hold up tens is one possibility. I could increase one level up by two, or I could increase two levels by one. So these guys could hold nine, or these guys could, would be able to hold nines, and then these guys would be able to hold nines as well instead of eights or smaller. So increasing your strength is going to just add to the numbers that these people below can actually hold. Okay, and then finally, this one's kind of simple. Um, here, I'm gonna put this at the two. What this one means, this is called the base, is that your lowest level can be as wide as you want it. It's not restricted to the number three or to whatever you've added with the um, width one. So this is telling you that you could have two levels. Your two base levels could be as wide as you possibly want it. So I could have, since I happen to draw them out, I could have however many tens down here as I wanted to. And then I could have as many nines as I wanted to, as long as, if this is the only thing I've increased, as long as I still have a fewer number and the numbers printed on it are also smaller. So this would still be legal if by chance this was a two. And then I could have my two sevens, because then these guys wouldn't be able to go wider than a three. And I could have my six like that. Okay, again, I realize it's kind of complicated. This is the toughest part of the game to learn, is learning these rules. But for now, let's just remember that we're gonna be able to break the rules eventually. But for now, our rules are, each level has a maximum width of three. The numbers of the tiles, so the ones that are printed and how many there are, needs to be smaller than the level below it, which would look like that. And uh, you can't mix the rows until you get your mixing up. But for now, let me do my best to remember. I think it was one, two, three, four, five, six, and a 10. I think that's what it was. I think, or maybe that three. Oh, I don't know. Okay, either way, we're gonna stick with these seven. These are the seven. No, I think, I think this was here. I'm probably wrong, but we're going to go to this, and this is how the red player is going to start. And what I usually do when I play is I just keep the best tower built that I possibly can, and then I just keep my other Castellers nearby. So for the red player, the best that they can possibly do right now are these three nines and this seven, and then we have all these other Castellers kind of waiting around uh, for an opportunity to jump in. And so if we take a look at what the blue player has, and also let me say, blue paper there, I completely forgot in a setup video and earlier to give the blue player the first player token. Um, I had taken this out of the box for, I can't remember why, I took it out of the box for some dumb reason, and it stayed out of the box until <laughs> I just barely remembered. So the blue player is going to be our first player. There's that. Let's take a look. Here we have two nines, a seven, a five, four, two, and one. So kind of basically, if we're following the rules, a base width of three, which we only have a two maximum, so I'm gonna put these two nines right here. And then the numbers printed on the tiles needs to be smaller than nine, and the number of tiles that can go above the nines needs to be smaller. So all I could really do is put that seven there. And then these other Castellers, who they'll just hang out up here somewhere, enjoying their country flag. 
Okay, so again, I'm just going to kind of lay out the best that we could do for right now, and we might modify it, and I'll explain more of that in a minute. But here you go. That is the best that the blue player can do for now. Okay, so I realize that the rules for building a castel can be kind of tricky. So again, hang in there. That's going to happen slowly. The way that we build our skills will happen slowly. That's why I make the gameplay videos the way I do, and how I teach the games is I just try to play as we go. But essentially, you know the three rules, you know that we can break those rules, we're going to talk about how to break those rules as the game goes on, but for now, I want to talk about how we're going to focus our strategy. So up here you see the round tracker, um, nothing too exciting is going to happen in the first two rounds, we're going to be collecting some castellers, we're going to be gaining some skills, all that stuff, and that's even going to happen uh, through the third round for our two player game. But then at the end of the fourth round, and this is what I wanted to talk about. At the end of the fourth round, any players who are in this city, so if we have our player marker and it ends up in this city at the end of the fourth round, if we are able to build a castell that uses um, castellers of this number value, then they're going to compete as to, who can, as to who can build the best castell using that player token there. And so if both the red and the blue end up in the city, they're going to have a casteller off, and the winner of that is going to get some points, as well as scoring their castell up here. So the reason why I'm saying that is, at the end of four rounds, kind of where my, my mindset is, is I want to be able to compete in this city, and I want to make sure that I can get um, castellers with a number two in that tower at the end of round four. So that's kind of my short-term goal. There are a lot of long-term goals that we could talk about, but I don't want to overwhelm you, so we're going to hit these long-term goals in a little bit. Um, but for now, at the end of the fourth round, I want to make sure that my, my player token can get over here and that uh, I have twos ready to go. So with all of that in mind, um, we'll, let's talk about a turn structure. And honestly, once we've understood this part of the game, everything else is so simple, so straightforward. It's almost a light game. So basically here, our player aid is extremely helpful. Again, on one side, it just shows us uh, the meaning of these different tiles. The other side just shows us our turn structure. On your turn, you can do four different things, and you can do them in any order, and you can do them once per turn. And so that includes really basic things like you're going to move your um, troop around the board. You can recruit more castellers to join you. You can train your skills depending on your location and you could take a special action. So we're gonna be talking about these, obviously, as we go along. Maybe I'll slide these down just a little bit so it fits better. Um, but what I'm gonna be doing, if you have seen my videos before, a lot of times I use these uh, blue cubes or use different cubes to track different things. So these don't come with the game. I'm adding these into the game just to help you guys um, where I'm <laughs> recording a lot and stuff. Um, basically, I'm just gonna put a cube on the actions that I've done because like I said, we could take these in any order and I found as I was practicing on my own um, that it can be tricky to track, make sure that I've actually done everything, especially when it comes to the special action. So very first thing that we need to do on our very first turn is we've got to move. Um, we're going to take our Casteller, our cool meeple that I already put on the board. Uh, we're going to drop that into the board in any location that we want to. And so I had already put our uh, troop over here just for our example that we were discussing earlier and to show that we want to end here probably uh, at the end of round four. Uh, but for now, we're, we're going to place our troop. Really kind of depends on our goals. You know, placing your troop could, you could really eye these castellers, which ones of these are you looking for. Um, you could also lo look at how you want to train, all of those things. Um, so after a little bit of off-camera thinking, what I've decided is this opportunity looks too good to pass up to have the chance to grab um, three of these guys. So what I think I want to do is um, I'm going to start here. So I'm going to put my troop into there, and that was my move action. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and recruit. We could take up to two Castellers from the region, and not a difficult choice, so I'm going to just grab uh, these ones. And they're going to join our troop, so we've got a couple of threes. Where do I put them? <laughs> Over here, sure. This does take up a lot of space, as you can tell, especially with the player aids. Um, and then... Ooh, and it should be said, and I don't think I've said it yet, this is not a strategy guide. I have played this game once with other people, I have played it once by myself to prepare for the recording, and here I am. So, <laughs> strategically, I might not make great choices, but hopefully we're still going to have some fun and you might pick up on things to not do. Alright, now, i got to decide if I want to train or if I want to take a special action. Um... 
I think ooh, I had, hmm, L let me go tell you what my thoughts were before I realized I couldn't do that. I was kind of hoping to be able to pick up a third, number three, and also move over here in order to take the training ability of this zone. So this is going to bring us to a great place uh, to talk about training. So here you can see the five um, main, what were the skill token things. So this is how we're going to be able to build our skills. So right now, if I choose to train, I'm in um, Villa Franca. <laughs> sure. And so what I would do is I would look at the wheel. And that means that I could train my mix ability. So I could bump this thing up to a one. Or I could look at the all regions part and I could train my width ability and put that up to a one. So those are kind of the two options I have while I'm sitting here. Neither of those are terribly interesting to me. I was kind of secretly hoping to move over here to prepare to pick up this one, this nine next time. And while there, work on my balance but I can't. So what I think is the blue is just going to stick to very, very traditional, normal things. And let's just stick with training. Ooh. I don't see the ability to really mix right now. So let's go ahead and train our width. So in order to do that, again, I'm just going to mark that to show that I'm doing it now. Um, I'm going to take my width marker and put it over here at the one. And now, rather than having a maximum of three width, I have a maximum of four. Not super helpful for me right in this moment, but it's something that I can keep an eye on as I work for that. Now, I have nine special action tokens, and there are ten rounds. So I can take a special action now, um, but then, like, there are three rounds where I will not be able to take a special action. But where I am in that zone, let's go ahead and use the special action. So I'm going to take one of my special action tokens back to the board. And I'm going to place it um, because I'm... Well, I'll show you. Uh, but because I'm going to be using it while I'm in here, I'm going to place the special token over here. And the special action that I'm going to be taking is here. Let me show you. I'm going to move the cubes off really fast. And you have three options when you do special action. You could just recruit one more Casteller, or you could move your pawn, an extra move, um, or you could put on a local performance, meaning that you have met the qualifications of these kind of big things over here, and you could grab one of them after you build your tower uh, for extra points. I definitely don't qualify for anything over here that I could see at the moment, so I'm going to just ignore this for right now in order to uh, pick up this other number three. And so I'm just gonna add this here, and now we have kind of a better pyramid, or better castell that we can build, which would look like this. It could be some threes, and our two can go there. So a little bit better than having two nines and a seven. And obviously everything is situational. This could be broken down and rebuilt at any point. And having done that, the blue player's turn is done. You might be wondering why I have so many cubes over here. That's just because as I start getting goals and I'm aiming for different things, I'm just going to use these cubes to help me track um, what the blue player is thinking as we go throughout the gameplay video. So with that done, I'm just going to go ahead and move these cubes. Blue player's done. Now it's the red player's turn. And so same thing. Let's go ahead and just drop off a couple of red cubes here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and move by putting our pawn onto the board. And the red player, I'm thinking, is going to head right here because they're interested in both this 10 and this 6 as well as the training that can happen over here. But for now, let's grab the 10 and the 6. And that's going to be a nice build up here. I'd love to get these 10s out as soon as I can. I'd love to get a third one. Um, and so we have taken the recruit action. And let's go ahead and train in Barcelona, which means that we're going to be able to um, gain some balance. So we're going to go ahead and put the balance over here at 1, and that'll be especially good as soon as I can get a third 10. They can just slide right under here, under the 9s, and that'll be a pretty nice uh, ability or move going on there. And then finally, um, with our last ability, I don't know that we really want to recruit the other Casteller that's in that spot, but I think I do want to move towards that other 10. So let's go travel. And we can go ahead and go to any adjacent region. So we can go here, here, or here. I'm going to move myself down this way in hopes of making it over here to snag this guy uh, before the blue player does. And with that, the red player's turn is over. And, oh, that was messy. Uh, that's going to signify the end of the round. So we're going to go ahead and move the round tracker over here to uh, the second round. 
if around had one of these um, little blue, I know it's kind of hard to see, these bluish rectangles with a plus sign, that we would refill all the regions um, with Castellers. But for now, what we're going to do is we just turn this, and that's going to change the training that's available in every region. And with that, we can go ahead and pass the first player token to the red player. And with that, let's go take a look at the board and see if we want to train and then move or if we want to move and then train before we go recruit that uh, number 10 guy. So right now, um, in any region, we can work on our balance, which is awesome. Um, and then here in Villanova, Villanova Vill mm -hmm, right here in the yellow spot, uh, we could work on our width or as we're headed over here to Tarrago Tar Tarragona, you know, I teach math, I don't teach geography, clearly I have some work to do in that area, um, but here in this area, we could work on our strength. Um, in terms of all of those, I think I'd prefer to work on my width, probably. It's not super necessary right this moment, but would probably be a good thing in the near future. So let's plan on that, I think. Yes, no more thinking, let's do it. Okay, we're gonna work on our width. And I've been saying that about myself for the last several years. So we're gonna go ahead and put the width here at a level one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use my special action. Uh, I might be using these too quickly. Oh, and I totally forgot to add one of these tokens uh, for my last special action, sorry. So let's go ahead and add these two special action tokens where they belong. So if I remember correctly, I used my first special action to get myself to move from here down to here. And so I need to put one of these in Barcelona on the side over here. And then what I think I want to do is I'm going to use my special action to recruit this seven before I head over here and pick up two different ones. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one right here and pick up the seven and put that right there, which, oh, this is getting crowded. And then that would allow me to put this guy up here, which is pretty rad. Not, not too bad. Again, we don't really have to build this as we go. I just find it satisfying. Um, and then that was that. And then what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and move and recruit. So let's go ahead and move this way. We're definitely recruiting this one. Do I want the three or the four? It's honestly kind of a tough choice. There aren't that many fours out there and around. I do have one three that I accidentally stole during the um, explanation part. I realize that now. Uh, so let's take advantage of my complete thievery and cheating and grab this other three. So we've got this three and this 10. And with a balance of one, I can go ahead and put these tens underneath. So just to double check, remember the three main rules. We can't have a width bigger than three. We're good so far, even though for us, we could have a width of four. Each level needs to have smaller numbers above it and also fewer people unless you have balance, in which case you need to have a smaller numbers. But we could have one more level that's the same number. Perfect, we're good there. Perfect. We're good there, and then we cannot mix up our numbers at this point, which we're not doing. So we're in great shape. That's a pretty darn good Castell, if you ask me. With that, that was the end of the uh, red player's turn. Oh man, this kind of looks like a fun flag placement, but it's tricky. Gosh, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to spend some time rearranging and thinking about the meaning of life and stuff like that. Okay, so Blue has been spending a significant amount of time off camera trying to figure out what the best next move is. And I doubt I found the best move, but we have found a next move. So we're going to go for a move action. And we're going to go from here. The big debate was which direction do I head? And I'm still not convinced I'm heading the right way, but I'm going to head up this way. And then I'm going to recruit these two here. And that's going to give me a 2 to put here. It gives me a random 8 that I'll use at some point. But the good news is that here we go. We can put our little 1 on top of that. And we've got a cute little a cute little Castell thing going on. Um, now, I need to try to get this up to a 4th level somehow if I'm going to confit. Confit? Confefe? Confefe? Whatever that is. I don't even know. Um, if I'm going to be able to compete and earn some points for this stuff. So uh, that's going to bring me to my next question, but let me mark that I have recruited. 
So my thing is, if I need to get another balance so I could add a row of nines, and I need a third nine. So I kind of want to head up this way um, to do that. So I would need to use a special action, but I don't really want to use a special action token if I don't have to. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to train... <sighs> this, is so, this is so tough. Okay. I, the trick is I'm going to end up here, but I need to get down here by the end of the next round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to train. So there are two things on here that I didn't point out. Uh, we have a special action, which lets you do one of the special actions for free without actually using your tokens. I'm going to try to save those if I can uh, with one of these rounds. Um, so I could use this in order to move here. So I, I will mark that I am training in just a second. And then... Um, that was my training point, and then I could use, oh, maybe what I do is I use my special action now, and then I'm going to try to move my way down that way. So, um, yeah, oh, yeah, and I think that's fine because all regions are going to let me balance next time. So, I use my train action to move myself up here, and now I'm going to use my special action to grab the nine. And I still can't add them to the tower because I don't have balance yet. But I'm going to be adding balance next time. And I think I'm going to be able to make it over to that yellow region uh, for the next round. So with that, the blue actions are done. It's the end of the round. I've got to find a better way to organize the world. Uh, we'll see. So we're going to go ahead and make a new round. You may have noticed I pulled the bag off from above the board because it was driving me crazy. I just had it off screen. So now that we have come into round three, all of the odd number rounds, we refill the spots. So I'm just going to kind of reach into the bag, and here, I'm going to do my best to be nice and fair and even here. That one can go there. And then two more down here, and then one, two. Yeah, I think I got them. Let's rearrange them so they look pretty. Like that. Oh, he's upside down. Um... All right, there we go. Okay, we've moved around marker, we've refilled. Now we need to turn the wheel so that everybody has a new training spot. And yes, you probably caught it. Once again, I forgot to add a special action token for the blue player, so let me make sure that I do that before I forget. Okay, so we got a special action token there. I know that we haven't really talked about what these do just yet, but I promise we're going to get there soonish. Um, so with that done, we need to pass the first player token. And maybe a better place for it is going to be right there. Why not? Um, and then, yes, blue player. First thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and train. It doesn't really matter where I'm doing this because I just want to add some balance. Um, of course, I could practice. And Oh, did I mention what practice does before? Practice just takes one of your skill tokens that's already on the side of your board, and you could move one of those up one. You can't take one that's not on the board and put it on the board, but you could take one that's already on the board and move it up one. Um, not that that matters here. I just noticed that I hadn't said it yet. But now we have this new ability to balance, and so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. And we can bring these nine down here. They've got the ability to balance those three threes right above them. This will be perfect because now we have a tower uh, or a castel that is four levels high and has some twos. So we're going to be able to compete in the festival at the end of the next round. Oh, I've been trying so hard to get here for this, this round, but really I have one more round. I don't know what I'm doing. This is so silly. Okay, so <laughs> I've got a little bit of time. I'm not as crunched as I thought that I was. But let's go ahead and take a move action next. And bring ourselves down the coastline to there. And with our recruit, since we've got another 7 and another 4 not being used yet, let's go ahead and grab these guys. And I'm going to kind of put them here. Keep them in mind. I guess if I was a good person, I'd put these things in order. Sure. It's all flexible. Put a cube here, and I'm going to, this time, four reels, because I am now realizing I have one more round, so I'm safe. Not do a special action this time. So I'm going to call that the end of the blue player's turns. And now for the red player's turn. You know, honestly, I didn't have the red player having aspirations to really join in on this festival in Villa Nova. Um, but I actually think there's a really good opportunity where they could do something 
there. And I actually think they could win that festival. So with that in mind, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move. They're going to come up here to Villa Franca. And um, from there, I'm going to do a recruit action, but I'm going to go ahead and pull a 10 and a 2. I need the 2 in order to qualify to join in to that uh, space there. But also, while I'm here, let me point out that whether I actually use the skill here in practice or my all balance region, it doesn't matter. I want to upgrade my balance ability. So I'll put these here for now. Now I can add this guy to the bottom level. And you'll notice that I'm no longer using balance right here. I am using my width right here, um, but I'm not using my balance, which means I can go ahead and add this two on top of the tower like that. But, so I moved, I recruited, and I'm gonna train, bump up my balance like that, and I could add, um, ooh, I have a couple of options. I mean, yeah, I could add the six here, and that would be a one balance. Oh, I could do both of these things. And then I could add a three up here because I can balance two levels. So I'm all good here. I'm balancing for this level here and I'm balancing for that level there, making this very tall and I can be very competitive uh, in the next round. And I just peeked over at the board and I was noticing of all of these. Now, none of my characters have been earning their strength. So they clearly need to work on that if we're gonna try to get these things here. But I just noticed that I could make this tower right here, which is, it's only two points, but it's still good. And so if I can get over here to um, Terracona, sure, then I could use my special action to put on a performance to win this one. Now let's talk about what these things are doing over here. If by chance, let's say that the blue player had put a, a marker right here, and then the red player is going to come put on a performance, they're going to be able to take this blue one and add it onto their map on their player board, and that's going to help them get points at the end of the game. And then they would put their red marker on after they've taken off whatever markers are there already. So that's where I'm headed. In order for me to do this, I'm going to need, um, well, let's go look. I'm going to be able to need, um, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. I just got distracted. And you know what? I probably could put this guy here. That's why I was distracted. Either way, it doesn't really matter because this thing is flexible, but I'm still balancing once, twice, and then we've got this guy up here. I'm using all of my guys right now. That's pretty cool. I got to be able to replicate this tower perfectly, which is fine. I could take Castellers off. Not a big deal. But what I'm going to need in order to make this happen is one more 10. So I'm going to just add a red cube onto this thing and then try to remember that I need another 10. So I'm going to just put a cube right here and let's go take this back to the board and see if I have that opportunity soon. And I'm noticing that I don't because there are no 10s on the board. So I'm going to have to wait at least until round five in order to pull that off. But that's why I'm marking this with one of my own cubes is so that I can remember, okay, that's something that I have the ability to do that I'm gunning for. And it's good that I don't have one available now because in order to have a fifth row, two things could happen. I could increase my width one more or I could make my base as wide as I want to. So those are regions that I'm going to kind of try to keep an eye out for. And so let me just go ahead and throw another cube again, just to try to remember my goals. I'll put one on here um, or on here, sure. I'm just using cubes all over the place. <laughs> again, this is more for me to track what I'm doing and for you guys um, a little bit so that you can track what I'm doing. Okay, that was the red player's turn. That was the end of the round. So we're gonna go ahead and move the marker over this way. At the end of this round, we're gonna be having a festival there. We turn the wheel, so in all regions we can add mixture. Ooh, that actually could play, ooh, maybe, hmm. What I'm humming and hoeing about is, maybe what I could do is get a nine for the red player soon, and then have mixture in the bag, and I could add a nine into that bottom row. This is another option that I've got on the table. And in fact, coming down this way, and he is the first player, that's not a bad idea. I'm thinking about that. But for now, let's pass the uh, first player marker, and we'll go ahead and keep it on that side for now. Okay, so for red, let's go ahead and move. And we're coming down this way. So that was our movement. 
I want mix, and I don't have to have this now, of course, as I mentioned before, but let's, let's work towards it. At least it's something to work towards. Um, so I'm going to train with a mix, but I'm also going to recruit, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this 8 and this 9. And I did spend some time trying to think and decide uh, what training thing would have been the best. And honestly, it was kind of a tough choice, but I'm, I'm making the best call I can. So we're going to go ahead and add mix. I can get rid of this for right now. Oh, well, I've added mix. Dang it. No, that's not going to work. Because I can add mix, but I'm not going to be able to have a width bigger than bigger than five bigger than four for right now I can't have five yet so let me go back to the board and see if there would have been an opportunity to extend either my width or my um my base without ruining my plans for the festival so we were right here and we are going to be ending here to recruit don't worry that's done so in order for us to be able to add that other one I would have to go up to or I'd have to come down here in order to train to add width or I could extend my base from here but if I go here that's too far away from there so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use my normal move action to come down here and then I'm going to go ahead and spend a special action to um, so from here I'm going to spend a special action to move here and then I recruited Okay, so I need to remember all of that. Um, and then over here is where I added width. So what have I done? I've trained my width. Okay, so now my maximum width for whatever level is five. It's still not going to prepare me for that big move. Again, this is like, this is the brain burning part. I love that about this game. I love the puzzle of building this thing and where do you need to go and all of that stuff. I've done my recruit, I've done my special action, and I did not mix. So I'm going to pull that off the board. I need to mix in order to get this 9 down here. And then I want to go back to where I came from to claim that thing. And I'm going to be able to do that. Looking at the wheel, the way the wheel is going to turn next, we're good. I have a plan. <sighs> but for now, we are done with the red's turn. Blue. So in order for blue to compete in this festival as a good competitor uh, like in order to have a chance i'm going to have to add one more level and i'm going to talk more about festival scoring really soon well you're seeing an example why don't i tell you now but basically not points at the end of the game but you're going to compare points of your towers and that's going to be how tall your tower is plus one more point for every number that matches that circle so in this example two so right now blue has one two three four five six points where i'm looking over at the reds tower they're going to have seven points i've got to get one more level of people on here their advantage is that they have a bunch of twos so the only way i could see this happening is if i can pull out one of these threes and get these fours down here for me to do that i'm going to have to raise my balance by one which is absolutely possible in the yellow region so i'm going to move down here i'm going to go ahead and recruit this Three. It's not my. It's not my first choice, but it's uh, it's the best I can do because I can't move out of. I don't want to move out of that region, and I don't really see an immediate desire for that six because I only have. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I want that six. So I'm going to recruit this guy, and I've moved down into that region, right? Yeah, I've moved into that region. I'm going to train in my balance. Let's take this to the board. If I could really. If I could really step up my game and be smarter and get my skills up, I could do a lot of a lot of really good stuff. But for now, let's see, I moved, I recruited, I am training my balance. And so now I can have two levels with the same number of numbers. And because I'm trying to pull the fours down here, I guess I could just as easily, it really doesn't matter, fours or sevens, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll put the sevens here. We could see if I could raise my balance even more then I'm going to be able to get the fours in there as well. And once again, I don't see a reason to use a special action. I don't want to move out of there. There's nobody else to recruit in there. And I don't think I can do any of the local performance stuff at this point, uh, at least not in the yellow region at all. So we're going to stop right there. That was the end of the blues turn and almost the end of the round. Now we're going to have our festival.
In order to qualify to compete in the festival, your pawns have to be at the festival. So we're there, we're good. Your towers have to be at least four levels high, and you have to have at least one of the numbers here. I know I said that before. So we both qualify. Now it's time to score the festival. As I mentioned before, it's gonna be one point for every level. So one, two, three, four, five, six, plus one point for each of the matching number. So seven for red, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for blue, awesome. And the way that this works is, if there are two participants in the festival, well, so if there was one participant, that's all, they would get a bronze. If there are two participants, the winner gets a silver, the loser, or the second person gets a bronze. If there are three participants, winner gets a gold, second place gets a bronze, and, uh, or a silver, and third place gets a bronze. Now, in the case of a tie, what happens is that the tied players each receive the medal one step lower than what they would have received. So in this case, they both would have won silver because they both won first place. But they're both going to get uh, bronze. And so let me pull this close to the camera. Each of our blue and our red characters, they're gonna get uh, one point at the end of the game for this. But also, they're gonna get some points uh, for their placement. And we're gonna put these on the yellow spot on their player boards. So let's go to the blue one first. And we're gonna put that right there. And now that we have something on this spot of the board, <laughs> this is not that exciting. So we have one space with something on it that's zero points at the end of the game, woohoo! Um, but as we start filling these other regions, then we're gonna get more and more points. So there's that for the blue player. Let's go get the red player, there's two. And then finally, we're going to assign this marker to um, one of the players. It's the player that had the most of this kind. So the blue player is gonna get these. And by these, I mean this. And they're also just gonna put this right here. And at the end of the game, you're gonna get two points for each unique one of these that you've got, and then one more point for additional ones. So this is great for end of game scoring. And I foolishly forgot to mark that each player scored seven at that festival. So we're gonna put both of their markers up there at seven. And I know I said this before, but just as a reminder, Remember that this will only track your best festival performance. So if on the next festival performance, red gets 10 and blue gets, uh, I don't know why they would, but three, <laughs> it's impossible to get three, but whatever, bear with me. Then blue would just keep their marker at seven while red would move theirs up to 10. So we have now marked their best festival performance so far. And we can go ahead and move the round marker. We need to refill the spots. Ooh, okay. A five. Oh, there's a 10. Red player wants that, unless they're really just going to go for the mixing. And then we got these here, and two over here. Ooh, another 10. Oh, and some sixes. Ah, lots of choices to make. Let me point out that our next goal, or our next festival, is going to be happening here at Vals, Vale, Vales, Vales. Um, and they're looking for fours. In fact, both of these are fours. So when calculating our points for the towers, fours are gonna get two points each, um, which is awesome for blue, because they have some fours, and red, not so much. But with that, let's go ahead and turn the wheel, pass the first player token. All right, so that's gonna go right there. It's blue's turn, and honestly, I've been spending a lot of time off camera thinking about what blue's gonna do. I had like three different plans, and it was kind of tough to choose which one I wanna do, but I have picked one, I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that it works. We're gonna start off with a move, and what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and move down here to Tarragona. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to recruit, and it's really tough to decide what to recruit, but I think what I wanna do is recruit the eight and the four, but specifically what I wanna do is I wanna increase my balance while I'm here. So the plan is to do that, but while we're over here, I'm also gonna do my special action. So from here, I'm gonna do a special action to bump me up here so that I'm here for my performance. So I'm gonna upgrade my balance, and I think I'm gonna grab these two. I know I want the four. Whether I want the eight or the five is kinda of tricky. I'm gonna stick with the eight and hope that that's a good call. 
So let me put these here for right now, and we have just done everything, right? We're hopefully getting to the point right now where maybe I'm going to be able to pull off these um, turn order things, and, and I think we're getting the feel for it. We're almost halfway through the game, so fingers crossed that things are going better. And we're raising our balance by one. Now what I want to do is I need to rearrange my pyramid uh, in preparation basically for this festival. And I want to get as many of these fours as I can because these fours are going to be two points each during the festival. So I'm hoping to make wise choices. I don't think, ooh, it's just tricky. I definitely want these fours here. But to get these fours here, that means that I'm going to probably just have to take out these sevens. If I had a mix up then I would be able to put some sevens with the eights, you know, in a perfect world. That's exactly how this would go. But I just wasn't able to get my mixing up at the right time. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these out for now. But I've got to get my mixing up or something in order to better this situation. So for right now, I think this is the best I can do. One, two, three, four, five, five levels. And... I'm using my balancing once and twice, and I don't really see an opportunity to use it a third time. I uh, kind of wanted to put these threes here, but I would have to have a strength of one so that these guys could hold up these guys here. So that's not going to quite work. Um, yeah, so as far as I can see, without having my mixing up, again, that's an issue. And uh, I want all of these things up, but they can't be. So. As far as I can see, this is the best I can do for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and collect these. That's going to be the end of the turn, and I have big plans for this area on the board next round. For the red player, I'm going to start off by training. And training from here means that I'm going to be able to have one row with mixed numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here at level 1, and that's going to allow me to bring the 9 down to join this row right here. So we've got five and then threes. There we go. I'll slide slide these over just a, a tidbit. I guess I could have done that off camera. But this is real life, guys. All right. Something like that. Okay. So we started off with a train. Now what I want to do is I think I want to um, recruit. And I want to go ahead and recruit the 6 and the 7. And let's see if we could put these here and not break our rules. So if I put the 7 here and the 6 here, let's double check. So we're mixing in one row. We're balancing twice, once. This guy's not here. So we're balancing once, twice. So that's good. And our width is a maximum of 5. So I think... We're pretty good for right now. I'm going to be modifying this shortly because my next thing is I'm going to move and then I'm going to do a special action to put on a local performance. So let me grab this. I'm just realizing my initial plan was to come over here to get this one, which is two points. I could just as easily come up here and I think I could make this one happen as well, which is also two points. Now, at the end of the game, for all of these that you've collected onto your board, they're one point each. So technically, this one would be a little bit better, but I would position myself better to come up this way. So I think I'm going to use my move to come here, and then what I'm going to do is hold on to this just for a second. So I'll put it right here, just for a minute, um, because I'm going to do a special performance, and I don't drop this right now. But what I do is I'm going to take this, uh, back to the board. I'll bring the cube too. And let me show you, we just have to be able to replicate this exactly. So let me put this right here and cube goes there. And all that work to get <laughs> the mixture. I'm just dumb. I don't know. But I can tell from the performance that I want to put on next time that I'm still doing good things by collecting all of these eights and nines and stuff. So I think I'm still in a good position. But let's just recreate this tower. So we've got a level four, a level three, and then we could have level twos and a level one and that's going to earn us this marker here uh, I, uh sure i'll put it i don't know where to put it we're still in we're putting it down here okay so now that's two points for the end of the game i'm just going to go ahead and rebuild the tower so that we have a visual on the next thing that i'm going to be working on and let's see do i have the balance 
to keep this guy here now that I don't care so much about getting one on the bottom. I think we're good. We're balancing once, we're balancing twice. Awesome. And then we have mixing to where I can add, oh, do you know what? I could add, we have mixing level one. I could put this guy right here and still be okay. So, I think we're still good. We're balancing once, we're balancing twice. Yeah, and look at all of these eights and nines. Well, look at all these nines, and then I'm going to add another ten. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good plan um, for now. But we need to go finish up, and the way we finish this up is we're going to take any of the tokens that were here, and we're going to put this one on there, and now we're going to take this one back to our board, and we're going to put it on the region where we just performed that, so we got to put it in that region there. So, that's awesome. Right now we're covering two regions. That'll be one point at the end of the game, but I really hope to get a lot more than that. But that's the end of the red player's turn. Now we're going to uh, near the end of the round, which means we've got a festival. Blue is going to be the only participant in this festival because they're the only ones there, and they're the only ones with fours anyway. And so let's go count up the value of their um, castell. And I've been really trying to think if I can make this any taller, and I just don't think that I can. At least not that I'm seeing here. So the way that this goes is, remember, it is one point per level. So we're at one, two, three, four, five. And then for each of those circles, those castellers are one point. So there were two fours, which means that each of these fours are worth two points. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, eleven. So that castell is worth eleven which means that our best Castell so far is at 11. We also were the only winner, we were the only participant, um, we're the only winner, Ooh. and so we're gonna go ahead and take one of these, and we're also the one that got the most of these, so we're gonna bring these back as well. All of these are gonna go into this region on our board. Now that's the end of the round, so we're gonna move the round marker up to six. We are officially past, or we just crossed the halfway point, and we're gonna spin the dial over here. And let me just take a second because I don't I don't remember if I talked about it in the setup video or the beginning of this video, I just can't remember. Um, but obviously these things are really visual, they're really easy to see if you can fulfill them. Let me just reiterate in case I haven't yet. Um, we could fulfill these requirements just by building a tower. First of all, we have to have our skills, I think that's not focusing, at a level, oh, okay. Sorry, it's not focusing. Hi, there we go. We would have to have our skill levels like this one. We'd have to have our strength at one, our mix at two, and our base width at one. And then we would actually need to build a tower where exactly those requirements are being met, and then we could earn these points. So um, that is, oh, where did I need to do that? That was there, right? Yeah, that was there. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. Mostly I'm thinking the red is kind of focusing on this strategy, and blue's gonna do their best to hit all of these festivals up here. But either way, we're passing on the flag. So it's the red player's turn, and they're really going to plan on participating in that festival because tons of eights and nines, I think that there's no way that the blue player is going to be able to catch up with them unless they can play smart and make their tower really tall, in which case they might be able to compete with them. Um, so for now, red, I think, is going to start off by recruiting. So let's throw a recruit on there. And I'm definitely grabbing the 10, and we'll just grab the 5 as well. But let me also point out that right now, we could enhance our width, or we could practice, move something up 1. So let me keep that in mind as I bring these back, and we think about the possibility of training. My plan is that we need to come down to this zone for the festival, and so we also could move and work on our balance, depending on our needs. So let's bring these back. And I want to see what we could do. First of all, we know we can get this guy down here, which is great. And then, what do I want to do? Um, okay, well, we've got this. There's no reason why we can't go do a performance. I haven't used my special action yet, and I haven't moved. All I've done is recruit. So we're good here so far. This five could go up here if my... Um, mix was up one. That was something that we could do uh, by practicing. So maybe, maybe that would be a good idea. 
it would certainly qualify me for a couple of different towers that we could bounce around and make. Um, so let me think. Our width is still good. We're mixing at two levels right now. And our balance, we're balancing one, two. Yeah, so let's go ahead and move our mix. Here, I'll put it right here uh, so it's on camera. Okay, and at this point, we're using everything. Now, what I want to do is I want to move. And I did train, so I'll make sure to mark that soon. Um, I'm going to move down here so that I'm in place for the festival. And then while I'm down here, I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and make this. So let me just grab a special action token. And I'm going to bring this around, right? So I've got this ready. And I'm going to be taking these and putting this in its place because I'm able to make this here. So let's bring these back. And what are we doing? We're doing this down here, right? Yeah, we're doing that here. So I'm going to put this here and just we'll just quickly go over. So we've got five at our base and then we can have a three and then we could have a couple two. So I could totally make this. It would just take me a minute to make it not messy, but we've got that. We're good. That one's in the bag. And so we have trained and done our special action. So the red player's turn is done. They're just gonna be ready for the festival at the end of the round. And let's just talk about festival scoring because blue is gonna keep an eye on that and see if they can compete well enough to move into that zone or not. So as it is right now, we're gonna be performing. This is one, two, three, four, five, six levels. And the eights and the nines are each gonna be a point. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five. So wait, what did I just say? One, two, three, four, five, six plus five is 11. So blue is going to be wondering if they can beat 11 points. I actually do think the blue has a fighting chance. Let's start off with recruiting this eight and the nine. And I'm going to point out that I can increase my strength with my training action. So I'm going to do that. Um, yeah. Okay. So let me mark that I just trained. I'm going to put my strength up here. And there are several things and reasons why I'm doing this, but just keep an eye at what's happening right here. Okay, now let me go ahead and add the 9 here, which is going to let me get the 8 here. Oh, messy. Sorry. Uh, slide these up slightly. Okay. All right. So for right now, this looks like this. And keep in mind, I've got strength, width, and balance. Which means that I could do my special action before I leave here, up here. And I just need to pick which of these two I want to use. I can totally make a tower that looks like this. But I have strength, width, but I don't have that one. Which sucks. I don't have mixing. Ugh, that's frustrating. Okay, so that one, I'm really close on having the ability to do that. And I could easily mix stuff. But for now... I can do this one, so I'm going to be bringing this back, and then remember, I would have emptied out that star token and then put that star token down. So unfortunately, I'm not taking a star token for right now, which is sad, but I'll get over it. And I'll just go ahead and put that down there. Great. We've done our special action, and um, let me think. Okay, so I can balance three times. I've got my width of four, so that's good. And the reason why I wanted that strength was I think I'm going to be allowed to add another level here, which is going to get me some more points because I'm adding another level. Let me just double check. I hope I'm not lying. Okay, so I've got my width of four. This is my strength. Remember that strength means that one level can hold a number more than they could. So this normally couldn't hold a three, but now we can with that strength. And then our balance. So we're balancing one, we're balancing two, we're balancing three. As far as I can tell, this is working out fine. And not only that, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels. And then our eights and our nines come into play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we just, I think, demolished the red player at this festival where we're going to. And they're kind of annoyed about that. But we can't perform at the festival until we get there. So let's move. And they're down here, and that's going to be the end of the round. And so, let's go ahead. We're performing at the festival. We're looking at eights and nines. Red is understandably surprised. I honestly wasn't planning on doing this. I was going to send blue another direction until I realized that this was possible. But just to review, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 points for blue, where red has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So blue is going to take the victory for that, and they up this to 14. Red also ups theirs to 11, which is great. Two people participated. It was not a tie, so blue is going to get the silver, and um, they are also... Okay, so blue had more 8s in their Castell. They tied on 9s, so t the 9 is just going out of the box, or it goes out of the game, back into the box, and then we're going to go ahead and give the blue player these tokens. And these are coming down here, pretty good. We have performances in three places. That's going to be three points at the end of the game. Oh, and let's clear these off. And the red player is going to get a bronze medal. Oops, grabbed too many, so let's take this back. And that was one down here. Super cool. And red is realizing if they have any chance of catching up, they've got to be collecting these and like those bigger point values of those while blue is doing their thing. I don't know how often they can compete in festivals and be super successful. Um, so they're, they've got to keep an eye on that. But what we're going to do is go on to round seven, which means I need to grab the bag and we refill these spots. Whoa, what have I got? Two, one, two, two, two. Okay. Oh, it almost looks like I didn't shake that up. Maybe I should have shaken it better. Okay. And flip that around. Perfect. Okay, we moved the round marker. Next, the next festival is going to happen here. We're looking at eights and ones. That definitely interests the blue player because they have a lot of eights and they have a one where the red player not so much. So maybe red player is going to go around and start collecting more of these. And then we need to spin the spinner. All of the regions are getting strength, which is great, especially for the red player who is going to start focusing on this. I'm going to stop being such a, such a goob. But for now, let's go past this back over to the blue. And blue is trying to figure out how can they get this taller and taller. I think this is completely doable and will be a really smooth move if we just move up into this region where the next festival is going to be. Let's turn this guy right side up. I don't know how I missed that. Okay, so we've moved. I'm going to go ahead and recruit this 8 and this 7. And also, I'm going to be training. I want to raise my balance uh, one more time. So these guys, I think, if I'm raising my balance one more time. So that was my train and my recruit. Okay, so I've got my balance to there. The reason why I wanted to do that is because I can get these guys here. But also, let me, oh, we're getting off the camera now. I think I can get this level 7 without breaking the rules. I think. Fingers crossed. Let's double check. I got it with the 4 still. We're good there. I've got my strength for that one. And then my balance. I can balance 4 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4. Awesome. This is going to be a great tower. I know I only have 1-1 one, one here, but look, I've got a bunch of 8s. I think this is going to be a successful festival for blue. But we are on round seven, and so let me look at my round markers. I think I can skip one more round, so uh, round seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I could skip one more, but oof. should I hold on to that? I could, grab, I could grab the other five, which would be an okay thing. There's a whole bunch of fives out there. Yeah, I'm going to spend my special action to go grab um, the five. So I'm going to be getting that. Let me put this in that place right there. And let's take this back. And I don't think I can fit him into the tower now, but that is going to end the blues player's turn. Let's just take a look in case the red player can also catch up to blue. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight levels. And then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we actually can't beat our last time's score, but we're at 13 now. And red doesn't even have a one, so technically can't compete yet. There is a one available, um, but they would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and if we had the one, eight. Yeah, I don't think red is quite willing or able to participate this time around. So let's think about which of those big um, local performances that they could qualify for. What's going to get them the most points? I think they're going to have to up their strength no matter what. Um, but yeah, let's go look at where the most points are. 
So the most points are, is this 7, which would require a strength, which we don't have yet, a mix, which we do have, and three infinite bases, which we don't have. There are four more rounds, so I would have to be able to up this infinite base um, three to, like I'd have to get a strength and this three times. That's going to be tough to get um, at this stage in the game. So there's that. Let's look at a couple of these sixes. So again, infinite base of two. Possible, but kind of tricky. So all of these infinite bases. I could come up here. I totally have the stuff to go there. And I'm close enough to go here. Um, I guess I could compete at the festival to get one point. But I don't know if it's completely worth it, honestly. So what I think I'm going to do instead is let's come up here for our movement. I'm going to recruit... Um, I'm going to recruit the 9 and the 5. And, I mean, I could, I could do a special action, but I think I'm going to increase my strength instead. So let's bring these back for right now. Okay, so I brought this down, but really quickly, let me remember, I'm going to boost my strength. And... I moved, I trained, I recruited. Let me see how these can piece together. I can put this one down here like that. Dang, this would be awesome if I could do an infinite base and just combine some stuff. Well, the reason why I wanted this five is because I could move these guys over, put the fives right here like that. And let me think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, again, well, if I got the baby, there'd be nine, ten. Oh, I would be really close. But I, there's no way for me to get over to the festival and get the, the one at the same time. But man, I was closer than I thought I could get. Okay, I guess. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, yeah, I guess the blue player had 13. Yeah, I think the blue player had 13. Okay, so that's not going to work so well. But, let's do our special action. We're running low on these tokens. Um, yeah, let's do our special action. We're going to take this, and we're going to put it here while we grab these. And we need to make sure that I can, I need to prove that I can build a tile using all three of these, or a, a pyramid. And right now, I'm, I'm not really doing that. So I've got to make sure that I can before I get all invested. So in theory, this is gonna go here, but let's make sure that we really can build a tower. So how does this one work? We are using our width, our one width. And again, if I needed to take stuff off, I totally could. And I need to be able to show that I can use strength. And I think I could do that by just taking these guys off, putting this on like that. And now I am still balancing because I have the balancing requirements and I'm using my strength right there. So. I think I'm doing that right. I've got that there. Cool. Now I'm going to just go ahead and reconstruct my old one because it's a pretty good one. I'm kind of proud of this and I'm using every single Casteller is a little bit exciting. And that'll be the end of the red player's turn. I'm glad that we're starting to get these points down here. That's going to bring us to the end of the round. And again, probably a good thing that red didn't participate in the festival. Oh, in the festival, sorry, <laughs> because if they had, Blue would have gotten a couple more points because they would have earned silver. Um, but Blue just did a Tower of 13. We've already counted it out. No one else participated, so we're going to get one of these. And they also had the 8 and the 1. So we're going to take these back to the board and put it in this spot. Here we go. Feeling pretty good about what Blue's got going on here. All right, so they're doing pretty good here. They're doing good with their diversity of the kinds of Casteller tokens. They're getting these medals. Uh, yeah, they're doing they're doing pretty good, I think. And as we move the round marker, we can see that the festival is going to be right back here. So Blue has to decide if they're going to go somewhere and then use a special action to hop back. We're looking for twos and threes on this one, which means that red could qualify, but blue has a lot of twos and threes. It's tough to beat them, I think, at this point. But we're going to go ahead and spin that one more time. Pass the first player token. And red is trying to figure out how do they get their next one of these. That's a lot of points. The trick for red is going to be to travel to get to the right place, but also to have the right stuff at the right place at the right time. Like, I can only increase my strength over here in yellow. But yellow doesn't require any strength stuff. That's just tower stuff. Um, so this, it's just kind of it's kind of a tricky balancing act for them right now, I think. 
pun intended. So what I think we're going to do is I'm planning on, um, gosh, it's tough. And do you know what's the other tough part that I've been better about planning with blue and not for red? I, I think I'm playing blue a lot better accidentally. Um, red has one more special action token that I, w I can only get one more of these things. And that's only if I don't pick up any more special stuff. So if I do use that special action token, I need to use it to get points. So what I think red is going to do is they're going to come down here for their move action. I think we're going to pick up these two fours for their recruit. And, um, well, I suppose what, another option is that all of the regions can use a special action. So if I came down here, I kind of secretly want to get over here. So if I move down here and for my training point, oh, it's so tough, but yeah, let's try it. I, you guys don't need to sit there and watch my thinking. I'm going to use my training point to use a special action without using a token to move over here. And then um, that way I can hold on to my special token. And then I'm going to recruit these two guys um, and bring them back. So I just moved, I trained, and I recruited. And I think, oh, I don't even need to mark this. I'm not using my special action. I'm going to hold on to that. I should be able to squeak out two more of these tokens if I'm very careful and wise. Um, but I think I can still get these on here. Ooh, maybe I don't have the balance for this. Um, let me double check. Let me put them on here. Struggling. Oh, oh, it's going off camera. Okay, so let me just see. My width is still five. I'm okay there. I'm mixing once. I could mix twice. If I need to, I'll keep that in mind. Um, and then my balance. I can only balance two. So I'm balancing once, twice, three times. So I'm going to have to lose that. Um, but I am using my strength. So, ooh, was that even worth it? I don't know. Kind of, I guess. Let's just take these off for now. Sure, why not? Okay, we're going to take those off for now. And then I am not using, am I, my special token. No, do you know what? I actually think I am. And this, this could be so dumb. But I think I can get both of those towers. I could stop worrying about this other stuff. I can make both towers in the yellow section. So I am going to do a special action. So I'm going to take this one off, and either way, I'm going to be able to get both of these made um, because the yellow is coming over to the special, so next turn for my training action, I can do a special and collect five more points. <sighs> I don't know if this is the way to go. This is, this is the way I'm going, though. It's kind of dumb because I'm not getting the diversity that I really should be getting from getting into these different regions. I've really, in both of my players, I've been neglecting this side of the board, and not intentionally. It's just, I don't know. I'm just one brain. Again, I say that all the time. So blue has to decide if it's worth it to stick around here for the festival. It's not going to help with our diversity. Let's count up and see if we can get more than 14. So we're going for twos and threes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, it's exactly 14. And I don't see a situation where I can add more twos and threes and get back here for the festival that I can think of. But let's go to the board and see if I can diversify. I want to do some stuff out here if possible. I think the blue player is going to want to raise their balance one more time. And you're going to see why in just a second. So I'm going to raise the balance. I'm going to move here. And I'm going to pick up the five and the two. I don't think I can use the two, but I can use the five. So I trained, moved, and recruited. So my training is going to be to move the balance up to five. And the reason why I wanted to do that is now I have all of these fives. I could put them right in here. And then I just got to double check, make sure I'm following the rules. So balance of five. I'm balancing one, two, three, four, five. 
Don't have anywhere for this guy to go right now. My width is still at four, we're good. And then I'm using my strength right there. Yeah, I think, I think I'm still following the rules. I am skipping the festival, which, you know, at the end is gonna hurt me a little bit because I could really use the little three token. I don't think I have a three yet, but I do have a two. Yeah, I don't have a three, but you know, we gotta balance stuff. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> pun intended. And I don't see blue using their special action token. Like, even if I had used it here, I don't have the mixing or the strength. If I use it here, I can't I can't do either of those things. Um, so there's that. I don't see a reason to pick up that six right now that I can think of. Um, so I'm not worried about that. And I don't really need or want to move anywhere right now. I don't think. Yeah. Mm, I mean... Yeah, so I'm going to, I have two more special tokens. I'm going to use them for the last two rounds headed this way because that's kind of where the festivals are going. So here at the end of the round, nobody competed in these festivals. So these are gone back into the box. And then uh, we're going to move the round marker, fill up the spaces. Let me grab the bag. We got two. We got those. Two. And two, let's take a second, make sure things look reasonably good. And there's that. We've moved the round marker. We're swiveling this around again. And we're keeping an eye on Barcelona. We're both right there within range of Barcelona. Ones, twos, and fives. There actually could be a pretty okay competition if red can pick up a one. They do have twos and fives, they just aren't on their map. Ooh, they're gonna have to up their balance. All right, I'm gonna have to think this through, but until then, let's pass this over. And we're gonna go ahead and start off with the blue player. Now, again, I've been doing a lot of off-screen thinking, and oh, I need to adjust, because this poor little fella can't even be seen all the way up there. Um, this is tough. Here we are at the end, and I'm kind of uh, trying to prepare for lots of stuff. I'm gonna prepare for this festival. I qualify for the festival and I'm gonna get into position for it. Um, but I'm gonna to try to build up for the next festival. Well, yeah, kind of, more or less. Um, I'm struggling <laughs> to know what's best to do, but let's go to the board. I'm gonna move, recruit, train, and I'm gonna special action all at once. So let's take our special action token up there. And what I'm planning on doing is, um, oh gosh, it's tough. It's tough. I'm still not convinced of what I'm doing. But what I think I'm gonna do is let's special action here to pick up this six. No, okay, This is, I had to talk myself out of this. I don't have enough balance and I can't even increase my balance anymore, so I'm not doing that. What I am doing is I'm gonna move down here to recruit these two sixes and special action to recruit that 10. So let me move that down to Barcelona. I don't think it matters because the red player is probably not going to end up over here. But we're going to do these. And then we're going to also increase our width because it's an all region thing. And I need to increase my width to do what I'm thinking of doing. So for now, I'm just holding on to these guys over here. And like I said, I realize that I'm not helping right now for this round. But I'm hopeful that by increasing the width now, that's going to be good soon. So there was that. And before I go over to the red player, because we're done with the blue player's turn, before I head over there, let's just kind of calculate where we're going to be at the end of the round for our Barcelona festival. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine levels. Barcelona is looking for ones, twos, and fives. So we're at, wait, what did I say? Eight. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, and then... Uh, 13, 14, 15. So we are going to bump up by one. I don't think I can get this two in there. Mm. I mean, I could take out the threes and let these guys drop, but that's, I think, going to bring me back down to 14. So this is 15 for now. Let's go to the red player's turn. I, I got to tell you, I have been staring at the board for five minutes, trying to figure out what to do with red. My biggest issue is this... Um, this hole I've dug myself into by using all my special action tokens too early. 
And so let me just take a second and explain the dilemma. I was planning on using the fact that yellow gives me a free special action in order to hopefully get this token here while I was in yellow. But this is going to require a balance of one, two, three. I don't have a balance of three. I only have a balance of two. So I can't get this without getting better balance, and I can't get better balance unless I go somewhere else. So it's tough because I could come here or here to increase my balance because I could practice here or I could get balance there. But once I'm in these places, I can't really leave. And so looking here, I'm not going to be able to get a base of two to get that. If I come over to Barcelona, um, where was that? Barcelona, yeah. Um, I could get this one and maybe this is going to be kind of where I head. Um, but the problem is that I can't get too far from here because I'm going to do a final festival because I think I can get a lot of points for a final festival down here. So if I go to Barcelona, then I'm too far away to get back here by the end of the next round because I don't have a special action token to um, move myself there. Ooh, so it's just been like, it's been, I don't know, my brain, I'm melting, it hurts. So the decision I'm going to make, it's so tough to decide, is I'm going to move down here, I'm going to recruit these two fours, and I'm going to bump up my balance one more. So these guys go here, and then I'm bumping up my balance up to a three. And the reason why I did that is, I mean, now I can't qualify to get that thing, but now I'm at one two, I can add one more, so I might as well, I mean, I could do a couple things, but I don't know, this is so tough, but let's just add these fours up here, and this three, and I'm going to try to see if I can get, I don't think I can get my balance up, well, no, I will be able to get my balance up to get one more three, which will get me my two for my final festival, so yeah, that's, that's that, I just did all three actions. And with that, it's the end of the round. Let's have our festival in Barcelona. So we're looking at ones, twos, and fives. As I showed you already, that's going to put the blue player got 15 for that, which is going to get them a bronze because they're the only competitor. And then they're going to also get all of these because they had the most of all of these being the only competitor. And we're, Oh, man, I am struggling. And we're going to put all of these tokens in Barcelona. Right there. Great, because now we've got five regions where that's seven points, and I'm going to be able to get one more region that'll be ten points. Oh, yeah, I, I have played blue better, I believe. And we're going to bump the round marker up to round ten, and we're going to swivel the wheel this way, and we're going to have two festivals this time, which is kind of a common occurrence for other player counts, but not so much for two players. And basically, just strategically, I'm going to put blue up here, and I'm going to put red in here for the end of that final festival. So pass this over to red. Oh man. And with red, I'm really keeping it simple this turn, I think. I think I, I, think I melted my brain enough last turn. I can't move anywhere because I don't have a special action to move myself back. Um, unless if I had been up here, I could use a free special action, but that's way too far. So I can't do anything there. So at the most, I'm gonna recruit this guy because there aren't even more people to recruit. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade my balance, and I think that's gonna let me um, do this last thing that I'm hoping to do. Yeah. So I think what I'm doing. Oh wait, what did I say? I'm upgrading my balance to a four. I'm gonna add this on here. I'm not changing my balance needs by adding this guy here. So we're still at a three balance, I believe. And then what's gonna happen is with that. Oh man, we're so off camera. Come on down. Oh yeah, sure. Our pyramid's splitting apart. And then that's going to let me get up here. I think I've done that properly. So we are mixing this one row. We have a width of five. And we have a strength of one that I'm not using anywhere that I... Oh, we're using our strength of one here. And then we're balancing one, two, three, four. Which is where our balance is. All right, they are ready for their festival. For the blues turn, I gotta get a little bit creative. I can't raise my balance anymore, so I've gotta get creative. I need to unbalance or stop using balance on one of these rows. To do that, I've gotta get this 10 down here, and in order for that to happen, I gotta get my mix up one. 
So while in Barcelona, I'm going to get my mix up one. That's kind of that plan there. And then I'm going to use my move action to move up here. While up here, I'm going to use my special action to put on a show. I do qualify for this one here. You can see things kind of clicked in a little bit more easily for blue. So I'm going to grab this because my width is a two. Can you see that? Yeah, it's a two and there's a strength. So we're going to be able to place these in um, Mat Mataro, Matero, Matt, and uh, recruit. Um, yes, I could recruit. I probably definitely want the three. And in terms of a six or a five, I don't think I could use either of them. No, I needed the six. Duh. I had this all planned out. Okay. So I need all these things. Ugh. So I brought all of this back. <laughs> okay. So this goes here. Again, with the two, strength of one. We're good there. We just earned that here, which is great. We have moved our mix up one. I moved my wix up one so that I could add a 10 to the bottom row. I'm still allowed to do that because I have a width of five is my requirement. Okay, so there's that. Oh, it's not gonna be perfect. I have to tell myself that. Oh, and we're gonna push this off camera again. But now I have the ability, I think, to add in these sixes. And don't forget, oh, our little one, there you go, until I adjust and do something different or better. And I can't get, oh, I can get this other three here, right there, but I don't think I can get that other two, which is fine. Okay, let me just triple check. I wanna make sure that I've done this properly. Yeah, okay. So, I've got my one mixed row. I have my strength being used right here. I have width of five and a balance of, or a width, yeah, my width is five and my balance is five as well. And so I've got one, two, three, four, five uses of that. I think I've done it. Now that we're done with our actions, let's go ahead and do our first festival and then we'll do our second. But let's start with the first. So we're looking at sevens, fours, and threes. Okay, <laughs> I'm doing the best I can with the camera. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten levels. We're looking at sevens, fours, and threes. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's awesome. 21 points um, put onto the Blues Best Festival Tracker thing. So we just mark that. We just put it at 21. Again, can't emphasize it enough that you don't add it. You're not adding it to your previous score. You're just marking it. And then, oh, I got to reach. Uh, only one person doing that. So we're going to get the bronze. And then I got to walk around. And we're picking up these three. And we're going to put these and this together. And they, where, yep. And then we're going to go put those on the map. All right, these are going down here. Okay, that is the end of whatever the blue player is doing. We're going to calculate the final score here in a minute, but first it's the red festival. And for their festival, they are going for six, seven, or six sevens and tens. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine levels, and then uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh man, that was a big jump. So they really, really needed that to help close some of this gap between the red and the blue. I still think blue is gonna have the uh, the win here, but either way, great showing from uh, red, and that's also going to allow them to pick up these tokens here. Oh, fit them in my hand, yeah. And then bring those back, and those go um, right here. Perfect. Okay, so that was the end of the round, and now it is time for final scoring. Let's go ahead and just start with red. And so keep in mind, we're starting with a base score of 20 from our best festival showing, which we just barely had. So the star tracker up on the board, we're going to start with 20 points, and then we're going to go through three more scoring phases. And by three, I mean four more. Yeah, four more. Okay, so first thing we score is our region variety. So looking at this, we have had good performances in four different places, so that's going to add five points. So they're up to 25. 
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of break down these, all of these things. Now that we know our regions, we can just take all of these and we kind of want to sort them out. Um, yes, let's do that over here. So let's just kind of lay these out. We're going to get one point each for these bronzes. We'll do this in just a second. We get one point for each of these tokens. So these are like the other three phases. It's like one, well, yeah, you, oh, I think you understand. Okay, so here we go. We get two points from the ribbons, and that's one of the scoring steps, okay? So two points for that. And then also what we're gonna do is we get two points for each unique one of these that we've got. So this is six points down here. So we're gonna be adding eight soon. And then we also are gonna get one point for each of these. So this is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I think I'm right about this. Where I, where I get a little bit self-conscious is in the rule book, it talks about scoring the local performances, which we're gonna do very soon. Um, and it just mentions in one sentence uh, about these. And I, I think I understand that's right, but they have a great example about end of round scoring, but they don't show any of these in their end of round scoring. So I just get a little bit nervous, but I, I do believe I'm doing that correctly. I think that's why you're collecting those. So what did I say? I totally forgot. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Add 13 to the other score. So that's gonna put the red player up to 38. And while we're here, let me just show you in the rule book what I was referring to. So here, it talks about scoring local performances, which we're about to do. It's these tokens down here. Um, but then it says, add them to your score, score one point uh, for each special action token that you collected by putting on local performances, okay? So I just talked about that. Where, where it's kind of making me uncomfortable is here in this perfect example where they show all these steps that we're going through, they, they don't show these stars anywhere. So it just makes me a little nervous, but you know, in the comments, you can go ahead and correct me. It just seems weird. This rule book is awesome with their examples. It seems weird. I've said it there. And finally, we need to score these down here. So that's gonna be 14 more points, which reach is gonna put me at 52 points for red. Okay, that was red scoring. Let's go to blue. Okay, so first thing is region diversity. We hit six different regions, so that's 10 points. So 31. I hope you can't see my weird morning face. Now let's collect all of these round tokens. Stack them up. There's a lot. This is where I think blue is gonna do really good. Uh, and bring them over and sort them. Okay, uh, what do we got? <laughs> a lot. Okay, two, eight. Silver, bronze, four, 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 and then these, star, five, um, bronze, I think they call these ribbons actually, it's like metal, like it's like a silver medal, a, a trophy for the big one, or it doesn't matter, and then these are ribbons, okay we got that. All right, so here's where blue really does a great job, and probably how they win the game. Um, oh, that is not centered at all. All right. There, there, yeah. This is, I mean, this is why you clicked on the video, right? To watch me rearrange things. You know what? You can handle this. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's two points for each unique one of these, and then one point for these extra ones. So what have we got? Uh, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm gonna put this up here, that's a group of 10. Then we got two, four, six, eight, 10, 10 here. Okay, so there's another group of 10. And then we have, uh, yeah, two, four, five, six, seven. And then let me pull, well, no, yeah. Okay, so what did I just do? 10, 27. So 31 plus 27 is 50. Eight, yeah, and then here, we don't need to go back here, then we get seven more points. So 65, I think. Blue got 65 points. Again, I kind of saw that coming early on. I couldn't quite stop it for some reason with my red player, but I tried. Um, yeah, so there you go. That was a game of Castell. So as I mentioned, it's actually building the people pyramid. If you're gonna teach this game to other people, 
building that pyramid and understanding how that works is definitely the toughest part. Heck, I think I spent like 10 minutes explaining that in this video. And um, you, you, if you've seen my channel before, you know that I usually try to get you playing as soon as possible. But you really can't play this game until you know how that pyramid stru structure works. Everything else is really simple um, and can kind of be explained as you go. So if as long as people know how to build a pyramid and you tell them, hey, you can go participate in the festivals as long as your pyramid is four tall and you have these numbers in that pyramid. And then you can explain scoring, you know, when you get there. And, and obviously for a first time player, doing that on the first festival isn't that big of a deal. And yeah, so... When, when I'm going to teach this game, if I teach this in the future to people, I'm going to definitely spend some time focusing on how to build that pyramid. I just think that that is the heart of how you teach this game well. Um, and also, it's awesome because it's so satisfying. It's so much fun to actually get those tall towers built. When those towers got to the point where I couldn't fit them on camera, I was loving that. I thought that was awesome. Uh, so yeah, um, maybe another suggestion is while you're teaching the game, just have your bag of castellers, dump them out, and have them build their own castell and start moving those markers along the side just as examples. Say, hey, build a castell where you're using a three balance, and they could just use any castell from, or casteller from the bag, and build any tower, and you just have them practice, almost like playing with Legos or something like that. So. There you go. Um, I've kind of been sharing my thoughts about the game as we go. It is a very simple game once you can build the human towers. Um, and I like that. I think this game played in about, well, you know, I, I had to cut out a lot of thinking time. Uh, that's where this game, is, this game is definitely a head scratcher sometimes. Making sure you can get to the right territory to boost your correct skill, but also see if you could qualify for these local performances and stuff like that. Like, it can definitely be... Um, it can definitely be something that makes people pause and scratch their head and think and all of that stuff. But that's why I like it, because you guys know I like that kind of thing. Um, I, I also like the balancing act, and I don't mean that pun. I just mean the balance of, do you really push for local performances, or do you push... No, these are local performances. Do you push for festivals, or do you push for performances? How do you juggle the two? And all of those good things. But anyway, I've said enough. You've heard me talking for the last... I don't know if you made it through the video hour and a half, I'm going to guess once I get it all edited down. Um, but either way, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Ugh.